Welcome to Overwatch. In this episode of Easy to Learn, we'll be discussing Tracer, the spunky annoyance of Overwatch. The poster girl of the game, Tracer's a popular pick and, well, one of the hardest to master. If you're interested in playing her, congratulations, you've picked one of the best heroes for carrying in the game. A good Tracer can run rings around her opponents and destroy entire teams. Just expect a few flubs while trying to get there. She's very reliant on your knowledge of how to match up and position against specific opponents, as well as your ability to track while aiming. This guide aims to give you a framework of how to approach opponents and how to think about how you fight. So let's start with Tracer's weapons, the Pulse Pistols. They put out serious damage when used correctly, so let's start there. I'm going to hit you with a lot of information pretty quickly, especially if you're a little bit unfamiliar with the game, but bear with me, it'll all link together and you should have a good frame when fighting. The first thing you're going to want to know is how they work and how to efficiently use them. The biggest trick to understanding the rhythm of Tracer is that she can unload her weapons in a single second and then reload in the next, one second for each. In general, it's much better to just unload the entire clip rather than trying to do manual reloads in combat, and then use this beat to define how you're going to attack in combination with the blink. Get in, unload, back up, reload, get back in, unload again. It's that rhythm of Tracer. While against more experienced players this becomes predictable, it's an incredibly efficient way of playing. Next I'll quickly address aiming with Tracer. A lot of people try to over aim when they're new, which sounds a bit weird but, well, let's elaborate. Tracer's pistols have a rapid fire and a fairly broad spread. The result of this means that if you aim at someone's neck or head at around the 3 to 5 meter range, you're going to get a boatload of headshots. That converts into a lot of damage. In short, put the crosshair around their neck and just track their movements. Nothing more, nothing less. Keeping it steady around head height for whatever you're fighting is going to give the best results. Start getting that right and you will deal a lot of damage. With experience you'll actually find yourself reliably counting out damage. Early on you might do about 100 damage per clip, but as you improve you'll start hitting 150 or higher, which means you can kill people reliably in let's say 2 clips. Learning to calculate this kind of thing on the fly is a little bit advanced, but my advice early on is to try and keep an eye on how much damage you're doing per clip. And just to restate, the best ways to increase that are getting in closer, keeping the crosshair smoothly on or near their head, making sure you use the full clip, and not dying. The last one we're going to spend a while on later. It also flies in the face at the top of the list. There's a balance to be found. Spoiler warning, getting into the face of a Widowmaker is much safer than getting into the face of a Junkrat. Like I said in the intro, she requires knowledge and a different approach to each enemy hero. So let's quickly run through the rest of her abilities to support this method of attack. Blink is, well, it's a blink. If you're familiar with the term, great, if not, it's a short instant teleport. Tracer can blink forwards, backwards and side to side depending on what direction you're holding during the blink. It's your main tool for evasion and best of all, you get three of them. After using one, they start to recharge. I'm going to comment quickly on a personal bugbear of mine by the way, namely that Tracer's running out of spawn and then instantly using all three blinks. Don't. Use two and then one when it regenerates. You always want to have one blink in the bank just in case you need it. The exception is if you're about to lose the match and have to rush to contest the point for a split second, but a tracer with no blinks will die pretty quickly. Well, unless... She has a recall. Recall is Tracer's real powerhouse ability. When using it, you get whipped back to where you were three seconds ago with ammo and health if it was higher than what you had back then. That disclaimer sounds a little bit finicky, but it's important. If you're on one hit point and grab a health pack and then instantly recall, you'll keep the health pack. In other words, recall will never take away health. Another important little tidbit about Recall is that it removes Zenyatta's or Discord, which is incredibly useful at times. Just remember that he can instantly reapply it. Recalling the moment Discord is on you is a win for him, not a win for you. My advice when learning is, well, the moment when someone lands a significant hit, a far a rocket, Soldier 76 gets a headshot, a grenade explodes nearby, Recall. Don't try and be fancy in saving it. You lose 30 hit points, it's time to Recall. Why? 
because at about 120 hit points you're suddenly in danger of being killed in either one or two shots and likely faster than you can react. As you get better with Tracer, you can start playing around with holding on to the recoil, but in general you're going to want to use it the moment you take a hit. Sure, if another Tracer grazes you, don't do it immediately, but well, hopefully you get the idea. Saving it and getting exploded is infinitely worse than using it when you might have been able to survive, maybe, especially when learning how to play her. It's also one of those things that you can play with as you get more and more experience. But one amongst many, I want to be the best immediately, teach me senpai, teach me the perfect timing. It varies on hero. We'll talk about tracer counters and tracer versus tracer later, but having estimates on the damage output of the enemy hero you're fighting is a good idea. Hanzo for example, if you're sub 125 health, recall or get some health. McCree, hope you can't aim or fan the hammer misses enough. Roadhog, the moment he hits you with anything, recall. Case by case, game knowledge, but when in doubt, recall out. So how do we get the most out of all this mobility? Well the answer is not to go and charge into the clump of five people and hope you suddenly awaken as Neo and dodge every bullet. I've tried it, it doesn't happen. Instead, use blinks to get behind the enemy lines. Just your presence there means the enemy team has to start reacting to it. If they're clumped, nip and poke, but avoid entering into any meat grinders. Skirmish and flank are your tools, followed by isolate and kill. What you're after is a one versus one, or waiting for the enemy team to be distracted and to go blitz a support. And this is the real key of Tracer. Tracer has the potential to win every one versus one she chooses to engage in. And that word chooses is ridiculously important, because the secret power of Tracer is the ability to run away. Nobody, not Genji, not Winston, not D.Va, can keep pace with you. What this means is that you get to decide when you fight, not the enemy team. It also means you can disengage as long as you have the blinks to do it. Go find a health pack, get your blinks back, and then go fight again. This is why Tracer is so strong and why she has a high burden of knowledge. While fighting, you have to keep track of whether or not you want to disengage or whether you want to go for the kill. Do you save a blink to run, or do you use it to reposition for higher damage? In general, these are the heroes you want to avoid. McCree, Reaper, Junkrat, Farah, May, and Winston. All of them have the ability to end you faster than you can avoid it, so McCree and Reaper for example, or get far enough away from you to avoid your damage and just murder you in their own time, far especially. If they're distracted, sure, but generally they're low priority targets that you want to avoid. Of course, it'd be remiss not to mention high priority targets, which are of course going to be Zenyatta and Mercy specifically. Lucio is also high priority, but well, Tracer vs Lucio can turn into a long, long brawl if you haven't got the aim down. You need to burst Lucio, get in close, and if he knocks you back, get in close again and go for headshots. You deal far more damage than he does, so you use that to power through. Zenyatta and Mercy are much easier, Zenyatta especially, get in close and kill, just don't get headshot. So let's recap. Blink around the target, unloading your clip each time. Blink away during reloads. Pull in close as you dare for maximum damage. Take a hit. Recall back and decide if you want to disengage. Find isolated targets, run away from anything if it starts going badly, be a colossal pain in the ass, and find opportunistic kills. Get as close as you dare before starting to fire. The pistols have a pretty nasty damage drop off from range, which stops long range poke doing anything. I also want to add to your things I should learn homework for a moment. I've talked up her mobility, but one of the best ways of using it is grabbing a health pack. Why recall when you can blink for healing after all? Learn the maps, know where the health packs are by heart. They'll save you over and over because you'll often be alone behind enemy lines. If a support tries to go for you, it'll often just get them killed. So look after yourself, basically. There is, of course, one major thing I've yet to touch on the pulse bomb. The reason why I haven't mentioned it yet is simple, it adds another layer of decision making. Let me bring up an example, a specific example. Roadhog is on the enemy team and you're playing Tracer. Now Tracer with no pulse bomb to consider would ignore Roadhog entirely, but Roadhog in particular is notorious for being slightly risky as a bully target for Tracer. Because you can pour damage into him and get pulse bombs pretty much every 30 seconds to one minute out of him, and the same is true for all tanks by the way, and I'll talk about Reinhardt in particular in a moment, but the way I think of it is this. Can I kill a support smoothly and safely? If yes, go murder that support. Can I kill anything else 
smoothly and safely? If yes, go kill them. If any of those questions are no, go and bully a tank, get a pulse bomb, then kill someone smoothly and safely with it. Think of tanks like big sponges. Most of them can't kill you without major effort, and if they're doing that then they aren't really tanking on the front line. Some tanks are picked for this intentionally, mostly Winston, who you can generally just land a bunch of headshots on and then run away from. Roadhog is a matter of dodging the hook and just not getting hit. With Roadhog, count his shots. He only has four and he has a really long reload. Exploit that fact. Diva is just a sponge that can't really kill you very well. Zare is probably the biggest risk and the most dangerous tank to Tracer. Make sure you don't fire into her bubble, get in for some meat shots and then run like hell. She can end you very quickly. Reinhardt however warrants his own little section. See, as Tracer you can really mess up a Reinhardt and I say this as a Reinhardt player. You just need to be very careful. He's usually shielding his team but he can only defend one direction at a time. If Tracer is nipping at you and whittling you down, the urge to turn around is absolutely massive as the Reinhardt. And if he does turn around, your team can capitalize. Your job on Reinhardt is partly just to make him really uncomfortable. If you are the Reinhardt, by the way, try to ignore it unless she gets too close, because then she dies in two hammer swings and they're hard to dodge without really backing off. So you've got nothing else to kill and you've been building a tank and got a bomb? Great, let's talk about using it. The ideal target is, of course, a support. An instant guaranteed kill, assuming there's no Zarya around, is always going to be good. The issue is, well, landing the stick. Tracer's throwing arm is absolutely awful. The thing has no range at all. The most reliable way to get a stick is to nuzzle up to whatever you're after and then use it, followed by recalling out. For example, running up to a Mersey isn't exactly dangerous, the worst you can do is melee you, Zenyatta's a little bit riskier, and Lucio, he's just going to try and panic and right click, but hopefully you can get your Q off first. My advice is, if you're new, try and use the bomb on tanks and big targets first. Get used to the flow of landing the stick, blink, bomb, recall. You'll find it easier when you start going for support. It's very tricky to do, but it's certainly masterable and you can make it fairly reliable. After that, keep in mind the bomb deals 400 damage, at least it does at the time of this guy's creation. You won't kill most four health tanks and don't bomb Zarya by the way unless the barrier has just gone down or she'll just shrug it off, but they'll be easy to clean up. If you aren't sure you can land the stick, choke points are always good for it or clump teams. You'll be surprised how many people die in the confusion. Alright, we've talked a lot about playing Tracer, hopefully you followed along. Let's talk about picking Tracer. See, Tracer's closest counterpart is Genji, so which should you pick and when? Well, the way I see it, Tracer is better at being a consistent threat, but is locked to the floor. You can generally get to most places on the map, but some places take a lot of work. Areas like Hollywood Streets phase require a lot of vertical movement and can make Tracer a slightly worse pick. But the first point on Hollywood has a ton of health packs nearby and a lot of routes to duck away into past the first choke. Perfect for Tracer. I'll also say that Genji is better off at picking targets at range, but Tracer is a lot better at closing the distance. Both heroes, however, are immensely useful. Tracer also remains the hard counter to any entrenched bastion nest because bombing him is ridiculously easy if you come in from the side and this is more reliable than hoping he reflects himself to death against a Genji. Tracer is also great if you're, say, stuck near the spawn on Numbani and just going and sitting on the point potentially forces two or three people back to deal with you. Where you might struggle is a team with a Torbjorn. I mention him specifically because it forces you to completely reassess your priorities. Namely, you can't blink around and be invasive with a tracking turret on you, so that has to be your first priority. While you can out DPS a level 2 turret if you recall, hitting it with a bomb so he can't molten core it to safety is pretty worthwhile. After that, clean up the Torbjorn, go and fight other targets. Just don't get too close because he does murder you if he does land a full shot with his ultimate fire. Bastion is much easier to handle, just don't start firing until the last moment. Tracer can kill Bastion in a single clip if she lands all headshots on his little blue glowy box. If not, bomb and leave. Find targets to sponge you off and just blow him up. This is why I love the bomb until later in the guide, it's just another choice to make and another tool in your kit. Sometimes it's better to skirmish, exploit a key target and then go in. If it's Bastion and Torbjorn, this is almost always the case. Now let's talk about playing with a Tracer and then against one. When playing with Tracer, make sure you have the kill feed on, and this is just true always, and be ready to capitalize if the enemy team starts getting knocked off balance. Pulse bombs and stressed out Reinhardt's especially. 
She can give you an opening, just be ready to act on it. If you're playing support, don't rush to heal her if you're Mercy, for example. She can grab health packs very quickly. Don't put yourself at risk. Going against Tracer, especially a good one, or two, two Tracers is especially tough, is pretty difficult. Your best tools are Winston, Soldier 76, McCree, and Widowmaker. Widowmaker gets a special mention. If unmolested, she can get a one-shot kill on Tracer. It's just a little bit tricky to land the shot, but it does get fairly easy, actually, with some practice. It's also hard to be unmolested. Venom Mine ruins her day, by the way. It's very good for forcing recalls. The flow for everyone except McCree and Roadhog is pretty much the same, however. Land a few hits and burn her blinks and recall, especially recall. Then go for the kill. Count blinks and wait for the rewind, because after that, that's when she's vulnerable. McCree and Roadhog are exceptions because, well, you flashbang or hook and then kill her. The best way out of that for Tracer, by the way, is to just hold the button to recall. It'll use it the very moment it can. Either way, when going after a Tracer, reliable sources of damage, or enough explosives to make dodging impossible in Junkrat's case, are always going to work better. Concussion Mine is also great, by the way. Just throw it out and detonate it near her. It's very difficult to dodge and a boatload of damage. Junkrat is always going to be a risky target for her to engage. I'll finally talk very briefly on Tracer versus Tracer, and it's very simply, don't. And the reason why I say don't is fairly simple. At any time, either of you can probably just disengage from the other one and everything you've just done will be pretty moot. You both have more important things to be doing and while keeping her busy is keeping pressure off your team, there's better people to fight the enemy tracer. If you are forced into a duel, try and be the second person to use recall. When you force the recall, she is vulnerable, so that's when you have to go in for the kill. Otherwise, if you overextend or make yourself particularly vulnerable trying to get a kill before she recalls, she'll probably have enough time to be able to do it safely. By the way, one fancy trick is if you do get a bomb stuck on you, use recall at the right time and while you're recalling, you are technically invulnerable to damage, so you won't die. It's pretty cool. Anyway, I'm starting to dip into a lot of specifics, so I think I'll wrap that up here. This has been easy to learn for Tracer. At some point, I'll do a hard to master where we'll go into even more specifics. Remember, Tracer has a very high skill variance. Knowledge and practice make all the difference. I can help with one of those, but the other one's kind of down to you. Happy hunting. Thanks for watching to the end. I've been Josh as one voice amongst many, and I hope you learned something about Tracer. If you've got any comments or criticism, do let me know in the comments. Toodles. Love.